So uh, this is Shane, a.k.a. the Rusty Cracker, the uh, man behind the Dragon Classics brand. And this is his, uh, what do you call this? The Franken Zephyr? The, uh, it's a Trans Zephyr. Trans Zephyr. It identifies as a Zephyr. So, tell me about it. It has a Nash hood. It's got a Plymouth body in the middle here. We've got some Studebaker fenders. Um, we've got the top lowered a little bit here. We've got a small block Chevy. And uh, I just drive the piss out of it. And now we're going to get some expertise here to flush some of these skirts. <laughs> Let's hope so. Plymouth. Uh, 53 or 51. I don't know. Yeah, so it has the, the, internet will tell me. the Zephyr front end on it, which is about middle of the hood, middle of the fenders. And then what year is the body? 51 Plymouth? 40, 41 Plymouth. 41 Plymouth that's been converted to a three window. Fenders, uh, rear fenders are pretty much unknown, right? I think they were Studebaker. It is the... Uh, 40, 41 Ford Dash and T-Bird interior and... Some more Ford windows here and there. Yeah, the owner of a junkyard built this thing. Well, he That's was it, high man. on meth. It's a Johnny Cash song. <laughs> right. Do you know what the guy's name was? Uh, no. All right, well. So, this is what we're going to be doing. We have the fiberglass fender skirts, which uh, we're going to get rid of and put a nice flush fender skirt in there. I'll use that as a pattern and work it all in there that post can possibly be in a worse position but I don't have any more room on my left so I'm gonna have to work around it but uh, as you can see that thing sticks way far out so it's not necessarily as pretty as it can be so we're gonna, gonna get rid of them big birth and hips and uh, you know she can lose a little weight I guess but uh, this is actually a pretty cool car it's uh Definitely, uh, definitely a, a, a Franken ride. See, these are actually fiberglass. It repops, but it uses this little, little lever system to kind of go up there and squish the fender lip there to hold it in place. And then just some little clips on the back. Pretty simple. Got some bondo in it, but uh, a little patch in it. One, two, three, four, five. It's not that bad. So, looking at this panel here, it's uh, it's almost totally flat. Not completely, but pretty close. Not much more than like a door skin. But you put the straight edge on here. I mean, it's it's pretty tight. So I think a few rolls with like a 12 inch die on the English wheel and then break the edge and then just shrink her and stretch her to get the, to get the shape of the skirt is going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wooden buck. I'm going to take uh, the skirt, trace it on there, cut it out, and then build a, uh, a male and a female, I guess, and then hammer the edge over that. I don't really have a good uh, tool to, to fold that edge over. At least that would be very crisp. I mean, I could use my bead roller, but it's not really the best, uh, at least that I have anyway. So we're gonna use the uh, wooden buck form. All right, so I got my patterns made. All three of them. So now I'll take the top one and cut the center out here. So I got a room to clamp and all that stuff. And then we'll start rolling sheet metal. You know, I was here minding my own business, just trying to work away. And went to reel up my stupid hose, and the thing got watered up in there into a big old knot.
Now I can't get the hose to work. Oh, FML. Nothing seems to go smooth around here. That guy there. That guy goes there. And that's all screwed up there. That was scary. All right, back to work. Oh, I got dirt in my face. Oh well. So before I get too far along here, right out of the way, I just took some basic measurements. So this is the rear fender where it meets here, and we are 10 inches. And it looks like it's uh, maybe sucked in a little bit on the bottom there. Go over here, get around my uh, 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag here. Measure this side, and I am 10 and a half inches. Oh, there we 10 and a half inches. So I'm gonna make strut rods. Actually, somebody already did the tabs here at one point. She never made the rods. So I'm gonna make those real quick just to secure everything before I do any more fabrication and welding. Then I can fit the skirt to the actual true shape of the fender. Because really, if you're going to make something crooked, you might as well make it crooked on both sides, right? Why be uneven? If you don't have one of these saws, you need to get one. These things are awesome. I found this one on Amazon for, I don't know, 300 bucks, something like that. So now I just need to make the ends here. I was thinking of just welding a nut on the end there, but maybe I'll smash it down and, uh, I don't know, drill a hole maybe. We'll, we'll see. Yes, my uh, pint-sized uh, welding rig there. Got the uh, anvil head there and my uh, pipe anvil here. So I'll heat this baby up and smash it down and uh, drill a hole in it and have an actual thing. If I had any sense, I'd go over to Stu's house and let him do it. He's a blacksmith, but uh, I'll just cheat. That'll work. So that'll work there. I'll just get some holes drilled in it and boom. And there we go. Time to bolt on. This is, of course, where I should be painting these before I put them on, but it's 85 degrees and raining. Not exactly what you'd call painting weather. Anyways, next time. All right, now that that's done, back to the normally uh, scheduled program. So having my straight edge clamp to the fender front and back you can see there's just a slight arc using the straight edge will uh, help you find what the true arc wants to be based on you know fender shape and whatnot so I'll transfer that to my 2x4 and cut it out over here and then screw that all together and then we'll start bending sheet metal the buck should be just about ready to go that was a nice little treat to wake up to this morning it's 85 degrees yesterday and raining. Now it's currently 40 degrees and raining. And uh, that is fantastic. It was definitely a nice way to start the morning. Well, let's get back to work. Got my two by four uh, cut out there. I'll just mount that board to it. And keep moving. 
So now we've got a nice curve that matches. So let's go back over here. We can get this fit up in there, and then we can start working on top to bottom curve. Which I don't think there's much. This is kind of sticking out, but I think it's more that panel's bent than anything. So I went ahead and put a little bar on the bottom here to hold everything. Got everything mounted in place. And uh, the bottom fits exactly the way I want it to. The top's still a little flat, so I'm going to add another 2x4 on the inside and put a little shim behind it to get a, just a slight arc in here to help match better, and then we'll be ready to uh, bend some metal. Should give it just about enough, uh, enough curve there for what I'm looking for. <sighs> That's about right. Some of this will move around a little bit once we put the outer edge on, but I'm liking where it's at. So I went ahead and actually cut a two by four with the arch in it. That seems to work better than the uh, wedge system. But with the outside there uh, screwed on, well, I'll clamp it onto it, I'm using it, but we're ready to rock and roll. So using my uh, skirt here, obviously as a pattern, I want to have about an inch overhang all the way around. So I've got enough room to fold the edge there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that and then we'll uh, get going. So I was trying to use different audio type things, a little Bluetooth job so you can actually hear better. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask uh, about it because apparently the audio is not that fantastic. I'm half deaf, so I don't know. And uh, this is one of them that I was using earlier, um, which seemingly worked a little bit, except it kept turning off. And then uh, I was just sitting here talking to the voices in my head and that's not really gonna work. So, sorry about that. I went on the uh, YouTube yesterday and went down the rabbit hole about audio and devices and stuff. And, you know, a couple hundred dollars later, I think I got something coming. So hopefully I'll get that uh, before this video ends up to try out. Uh, th this whole thing is uh, an experience in sort of what not to do, which is most of my life, by the way. But, uh, you know, trying to keep it fun, but yet functional at the same time is a little bit of a challenge. But thanks. That is a good beginning. It actually fits good on there. Everything lays flat like it should. So I think I'll do a couple passes in the English wheel just to give it a little, uh, little structure. Then we'll uh, pull the edge and move on. There we go. Just got a little bit of structure in it, so it's just not quite so flat. And let's mount it in the buck, and we'll beat that thing like a step kit. You can never have too many clamps. Uh, and I probably don't have enough. So I need to clip the corners here so everything will bend correctly. And I'm gonna use my uh, wooden mallet here to uh, break the edge all the way down. This, uh, nothing special, I just made this as some three quarter inch uh, red oak that I glued together and put a piece of uh, leather on. So instead of the hammer, I can use my handy uh, handheld planching hammer I made a couple uh, months back. It'll go much faster. Use 
the smaller one. Well, that doesn't work for shit. Never mind. It doesn't have enough ass to move it. Got uh, most of that folded over there. As you can see, there's a bunch of, well, tacos. So now I'll pull this off and go over to the shrinker, start working all those together, and tighten everything up. After a couple trips through the shrinker stretcher, some hammer dolly, the edge is just about where I want it. We fit the form real good. It's almost there. A little more uh, shrinking on the edge there and I think we'll be just about ready to trim that and move on to the other side. I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. Let's move on to the second one. Still need to do the outer lip on it and that will bring everything in tighter. Because the fender's a little, a little misshapen, but uh, that is what we're looking for. So, let's start number two. So I took the pattern disassembled it and flipped it around for the other side. So what I learned from doing the first one is that I left a little bit too much material all the way around it. Um, it was just over an inch and I ended up trimming the other one to 5 8 um, which makes the metal much easier to work and uh, hopefully you know go smoother. So one of the things when I was hammering it, it tends to pucker up in certain spots. So I think once it starts to pucker, maybe I'll cut that and uh, make it a little bit easier to shape. But I'm going to trim off uh, the outer edge to 5 8 and then uh, start beating on it. Everything's a bit of a rough draft, but uh, I'm happy with the first one, so hopefully the second one is a lot better.
you know, that's on the uh, driver's side, so that's one he'll see. Passenger side, eh, who cares? So you can see I have a lot less waffling with having a little less metal there. Definitely a better choice. This is definitely where being ambidextrous comes in a handy. Yeah, that definitely worked out a lot better. Just a difference of about three eighths of an inch. Now to finish it out. So I got it back on the buck. Everything is fitting perfect. I'm just gonna address the edge there just to clean it up a little bit. And what I got is a little dolly I made years ago just for edges. It just goes on there and just follow it along and straighten it out. And disco. Now I move on to the outer edge and uh, weld that to the fenders. So I'm gonna give this thing a run through the uh, bead roller here just to clean this edge up a little bit. And then we'll start making the outer piece. Much nicer. So now that I got all that done, it's time to do the outer edge. So what I got here is I got some paint stick that I cut down. Uh, this is eighth inch thick. I'm gonna tape that all along the edge to use as a spacer, and then I'll cut a piece of two inch strip, bend it at a 90, and go all the way around so everything meets up. The spacers will keep everything, you know, in alignment. So it'll end up looking like this. So as you can see, I got a consistent gap all the way around. That's what we're looking for. This is just about ready to weld. I had to make it in three pieces. So I think I'll go ahead and screw this to the skirt or something like that. Maybe use clamps before I uh, go ahead and weld it in everything aligned and I've been kind of thinking about what I'm going to do for uh, latches to hold this thing on there and uh, I seen a video oh, maybe six eight months ago uh, Mike Bella was made a, a pair of skirts and he used uh, little gate latches and I was thinking that seems kind of that seems kind of cheesy so after thinking for several days and come up with a complex system of levers and pulleys to hold this thing on there I decided that gate latches work just fine that's what I'm going to use so thanks Mike
Weep. That's how it's supposed to fit. Got that all welded into one piece. And there it is. One super high quality, uh, what's this thing called? A barrel bolt. That's gonna be the magic. Just gonna make it fit there. Got all three pieces welded together. And as you can see, let me put that on wide angle so we can see what we're talking about. It's gonna weld right into there. And disco, we're almost ready. So let me show you where we're at. So I got my gate latch, or barrel latch, I guess it's called. That is set up there. Then in the front here, I got a little pin that I'm gonna weld in place. So the skirt will put the pin in there and then sort of roll up. And then you can attach that. I gotta put a pin up here still. But one other thing that I did is uh, I put nuts and bolts and bolted everything together. So then I'm gonna take and weld the backs of the nuts and cut that off there. So that way everything stays nice and square when I weld it. And then it'll be just a matter of getting inside and take the nuts and bolts back off. That's why it's important to weld on the inside, otherwise I'll be completely screwed. So in theory, it should work. We'll see. Well, at least it wasn't plaster. Just good old, uh, you know, the fix-all, that magic salve known as Bondo. Um, which actually, I'm not sure why most of it was even there because the metal's not even that bad. But one little spot, right there, I mean, two minutes with a hammer and a dolly and uh, your grinder, you probably didn't even need any. So that's a little weird. But other than that, a couple little rough spots there that could very easily been worked out. I don't know, I don't like sanding. I'd rather use a hammer or a dolly personally. Not that I'm uh, an ace metal shaping guy, although I do play one on TV. You know, the truth is, is most cars have a little filler in them, but it's the idea of having as little as possible. And uh, some stuff that people mud over is sometimes a little frightening. Anyways. Time to clean up and well, mocked up in place. If that doesn't cause you to get an alimony payment, nothing will. So everything is screwed on. So everything that's aligned. So trying to decide whether I wanna cut this and weld it at the same time as I go, or scribe it and trim it and pull it all off and then weld it in. Or maybe a combination of the two. Really simply for clamping, but just trying to keep everything aligned so it doesn't get all funky.
And this thing just showed up today for some work, so that'll be a future episode. And uh, it is a doozy. Let's see if we can't correct some things uh, that are seriously wrong with it, like everything. But it does have an overall good look. So, coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. So, I got the skirt taken off. This I'll put back on, clamp everything, scribe it, trim it, bolt it all up, and we're finally ready to go. I was initially thinking I could weld it with the skirt still attached to the outer ring, but there's no way to clamp it. So, um, screwing it on there, scribe it, marking it, cutting it, and relining it, it should all work just fine. It's just not how I imagined it in my head. So, so this is the current front fender. I uh, believe they're part Zephyr, part Nash, part Dodge. I have no idea. But you'll notice that the fender swoops down that lip there. Now, to me, from a design perspective, it makes the wheels look like they're forward in the fenders. Now, these things really are pieced together. You really can't see in there, but hold up. And that is the wheel lip changed out. That's actually the piece I cut off the back fender. But see how it closes that wheel in better? What is your guys' opinion on that? Uh, I personally like it a little more closed up, but uh, what do you think? A sharp scribe is everything, which I can't find, so I'm using my... Uh, compass but whatever it works um a small problem there these are only uh about a year old broke the whole chingus off there So now that I got everything tacked in place, cleaned up and re hammer and dolly, time to uh, get the TIG out and burn it in permanently. Now was definitely a good time to remount the uh, the skirt and make sure all the gaps are uh, where they need to be. And uh, you'll notice that things will move around after that you uh, you weld them. So my theory of leaving the outer lip bolted to the fender skirt would have been genius, but uh, I don't know if I was going to be able to pull it off. So let me show you. My gap has opened up just a little bit, so now I have to correct that, which isn't a, isn't a big deal, but it does move around. But it looks about 10 million times better than it did, so I'm just going to adjust the bottom pin there to bring this up a little bit, and that should balance everything out.
need to tweak. Well, that's uh, about as far as I'm going to go. Next stop will be the paint shop, so they can do all the little finish work. So things that I would have done differently. I would have definitely left the fender skirt bolted to the outer ring uh, when I welded it. That would have uh, been a lot nicer. And now i got to change some gaps over here that are a little looser than uh, I wanted. But, uh, you know, things move around when you, when you weld things. It's just what happens. Not a big deal. Also, on my wooden pattern, I think I would have taken, or I will take, and put a, say, an eighth inch piece of steel strap around the outer edge. That way, when I hammer it over, I get a, a more uh, a crisp edge on things. That uh, that would be helpful. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward. And I think that's about it for this. Uh, we're uh, heading up to Dallas in a couple days, so we got to get this thing buttoned up as uh, well as my 40, which is always broken. Do you hear that noise? You know what that is? Skirt. Busted up car skirt. Where'd we find it? On the road. <laughs> Who does it belong to? Presby. <laughs> That's what friends are for. We pick up the, the pieces of your car that fall off. <laughs> yes. Always got to have a chase vehicle. Well, the fender <laughs> skirt didn't work out as planned. <laughs> The latch only works if you latch it.